Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss S Corporation taxes at the corporate level. And specifically, we are discussing here the passive investment income penalty tax. It's where the S Corporation itself paid the taxes. Huh? Little bit unusual. Of course it is, because the S Corporation are not tax paying entities. S Corporation are flow through. It means any revenues, any and all the revenues and expenses, the net of them, which is profit or losses, are passed through the shareholders. Therefore, the corporation should not have a tax liability. But under certain circumstances, like what we saw in the built-in gains tax in the prior session, the corporation might have to pay some taxes. In this session, we'll focus on the passive investment income penalty tax. Well, first, we need to know what that tax is. And after we discuss this tax, we still have two situations where the S corporation might have to pay taxes on a corporate level, and that's LIFO recapture and the general business credit recapture. And I will focus on those and I will create one recording for those two. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So what is passive investment income tax penalty? Well, what is passive investment? That's the first thing we need to know. Passive investment is when you own investments, a portfolio income, stocks, bonds. You might have some rental property in which you don't participate. Like maybe an apartment building in Florida, you are just an investor. Uh, you could have royalty income from your books, from your innovation, so on and so forth. A passive investment is generated from an activity in which the taxpayer is not actively engaged. What does that mean? It means you are on the beach somewhere in Hawaii and you're getting paid. Why? Because your money is working for you. You have investments in stocks, royalty income, interest income, dividend income, rental income. Notice if the taxpayer does not actively participate. Well, if you actively participate, then that's your job. That's your business. Then you are no longer passive. You are active. If you are not passive, you are active. Well, that's not the case. It's rental income where you are passive. You are not really managing the business. A management company is taking care of the decisions. So here's what happened. The passive investment income tax is imposed on the S corporation that has earnings and profit at the close of the tax year. That, that, that's not the only thing. You might Maybe every year you might have uh, uh, accumulated earnings and profit. And notice here, and you generated Passive investment income, I'm going to say, I'm gonna, we're going to be abbreviating this as PII, an excess of 20% of the gross receipt. What does that mean? It means your passive investment income is large enough to represent 25% of your gross profit. So if your gross profit is, let's just make it simple, just kind of illustrate the concept. If your gross profit is uh, 100,000 and you have 20,000 in passive investment, that's 20%. Well, if you have 25,000 of the 100,000, well, you're at the 25%. Now, once you exceed 25 or 25% or more, an excess of 25% is an excess, not 20, an excess of 25%, more than 25%. Now, this tax will be imposed. Now, let's take a look at a little bit more detail about this. The passive investment tax is 21%. Well, what, what's special about 21%? Well, it's the corporate tax. You have to pay the corporate tax. It's 21%. Now, you could be watching this recording in 2026, 2027, and the corporate tax could be different. So this 21% is not written in stone. It's usually the highest corporate tax rate. In addition, the tax is applied to the excess net investment income. So we're going to learn about something called ENPI, excess investment net passive income. How do we compute this excess net investment passive income? We're going to take the PII, the passive investment income, an excess of 25% divided by the PII, passive investment income, times net PII. What's net PII? You're going to have certain deductions from your passive investment. You might be incurring if you invest in stocks. You might have to borrow some money. You have interest expense. Well, that's part of your 
expenses to invest. Therefore, NPII is the difference between your PII, you're going to have passive investment income. Simply put, you're going to have income of $10,000 from dividend and the deduction. And you might and you might have to pay $1,000 to borrow money to buy the stocks. So your NPII is 9000 So simply put, this is your income from the dividend. And this is your expenses that's related to the investment. Gives you NPI, NPII. Every time you hear the word net something, it means you are deducting something from the gross. Okay, so for the purpose of determining the PII tax, the ENPI, the access net passive investment income may not exceed the S corporation income. In other words, the PII is imposed on the lesser of the corporate's ENPI or its net income. The best is to look at a couple example, examples to illustrate this concept. The first example, during 20X4 target as an S corp generated gross receipt without passive income of 301. So that's the gross receipts without with no passive income. In addition, it generated passive investment income of 110 and incurred 32,000 of expenses related directly to the production of passive investment income. Usually it could be interest interest expense if you want to borrow money to invest. It could be a management fee. You have to pay someone to manage your money. That's also cost or expenses related to the production of passive investment income. Now, we're going to compute the passive investment income tax penalty for the year, if it exists. Well, let's find out. Well, what's the total receipt? The total receipt for the for the company, 301, let, I'm gonna put this in quote called active. It's not really active, it's just the gross receipt. And this is the passive. And together, they will give us 411,000. The first thing we want to find out is, do we have, do they exceed 25% of your gross receipt, passive income? Well. Target passive income exceeds 25% by 7,250. How did I find this out? Well, let's think about it. If you take 411,000 and you multiply it by 25% to find out what is 25% of your gross receipts. 25% is 102,750. So if you have more than 102,750 in passive, then you exceed 25%. It, indeed, you have 110, you exceeded the uh, the passive investment income by 7,250. Okay. On the other hand, what's NPII, net passive investment income? Remember, it's 110 and we have to deduct certain expenses. Again, it could be interest expense, management fee to someone to manage your money, equal to N, the net is 78,000. Now let's use the formula. We're going to take the amount in excess of 25% divided by PII, the passive investment income overall. And let's see, 7,250 divided by 110,000. So the amount in excess represent approximately 6.5%. Multiply this by the NPII, which is the net, which will give us excess net passive investment income of 5,141. Simply put, they give you a chance to deduct your passive investment income to reduce your taxes because you are incurring a cost. And that's only fair. Okay, you made that passive investment income, but that did not come free. You had to pay some money for it while well, they allow you to deduct this expense. Now, if that's the access, then you the net access, basically the true access, then you have to pay 21% and you have a tax bill. This is, again, this tax bill is for the corporation itself of $1,080. Let's take a look at another example. At the close of the tax year, 2006, Glory, an S corporation has accumulated EMP of 320. During 06 or X6, Glory reported operating income of 520, taxable interest income of 220. Again, what is taxable interest? Passive operating expenses of 210 and deductibles related to the interest of 50,000 which is well you incurred $50,000 to generate the taxable interest you have to borrow money maybe to buy those bonds that's interest expense determine passive investment income for 20x4 well let's first let's add up all the gross receipts to see where we are we have 520 again of active and 220 of passive total of 740 the passive investment income applies as Glory's PII of 220 exceeds 25% of the gross receipts of 740. Well, if we take 740 times 0.25, and that's equal to 185. So, 
if your gross if if your PII exceeds 185 then guess what we might have this passive investment passive investment penalty tax does it exceed sure it does you have 220 well now we have to compute not PII and PII because you are allowed to deduct your expenses well it's 220 that's your PII all interest minus 50,000 so this is basically this is interest income which is passive income and this is interest expense that's related so the reason you have this interest expense because you have this interest income again how does this work you borrow money to buy bonds you borrow money you have interest the bonds pay you interest well you net them out the net is 170,000 now we are ready to compute the excess NPI well how do we compute this well it's 220 minus 185 divided by 220 remember 220 is the net so the the numerator is the axis so what's 220 minus 185 that's going to give us so you are 35,000 above the 25,000 so 35,000 divided by 220 and that's approximately 15.9 percent so this ratio is 15.9 percent now since you can deduct your uh, expenses you are allowed to reduce it a little bit times 170 so your ENPI is $27,045. What do you do now? You have to pay a tax on this $27,045. $27, what is the tax rate? Again, why is it 21%? Because that's the corporate tax rate. That's, that's the corporate. So who pays this tax? The corporation itself, which is the S corporation, which is a little bit unusual. But guess what? That's, that's how it works. It's one of those special circumstances where the corporation itself will have to pay taxes. What's left in this topic is the LIFO recapture and the general business credit recapture, which we'll talk about in the next session. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and work MCQs, true, false, look at additional resources. That's going to help you, whether you are a CPA candidate or enrolled agent. The passive investment income penalty tax or the passive investment income tax is an important topic on the CPA exam. Take it seriously. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.